So now go. I'll count you in. Count me in. All right, three, two, one. Sweet. Probably not. She could be mean. She's probably not. The smoke machine. Mums. You know, if it wasn't for mums, none of us would be here. Because Mary's a liar! <laughs> liar! You... Somebody <laughs> had intercourse... <laughs> With Mary. She got hot boxed. Is that what they call that? That's what I call it every time I make love to my wife. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I can't believe you still have one. You, you I know, that's, well, hey. You smother what, what, her so much that. <laughs> when you throw it out, hey, I'd really love, I've been thinking about hot boxing you ever since we sat down for dinner. Yeah. And she doesn't leave. You marry that one. Right. Good mm. point. Yeah. If you're just tuning in, we're not really here. We're just smoking the wind. Dude, this is. Jeremiah Watkins might be here, but he also <laughs> might not be. He may be the Loch Ness Monster. It could be monster. via internet. Do you say via or via? I think I say via. Which country is, is Australia says via? I think so. Every time I hear an Australian announcer, I'm like, shut up, you idiot. You know? Because it's like, <laughs> you're, you're saying in all the words wrong? Yeah, because like, if you're an announcer in Australia, oh, good day, .au, then do that. But if you're here, shut up, you idiot. You know, learn like, how to say oh, the English. Like, yeah, right. it's like you know, it's because there's a supercross guy and he says stuff where it's just like, no, dude, that's not how you say his name. Saying the, I'm saying the Australian version. It's like you're not in Australia. Pay respects to the king, which is the USA. Oh, there you we know? go. There we freaking go. If we're go. doing the America's oh, Cup. Oh, this baby bird is taking flight right now. Let's you don't freaking exist. Oh, you're getting go. there. Oh, I'm getting there. I'm Can we freaking get getting there. North dude. Carolina. We'll get a shirt. I need a shirt. That'll do it. Oh, now we look Take cool. Your shirt off. Now it looks like an 80s your music like video here. I, need, if I had a t shirt, I could get it out of here. Oh, yeah. I've been talking about a fan for like six years. I think this is the same amount of smoke you need in the room if you want to interview J Lo on camera these days. No, it's not J Lo. J-Lo doesn't do... Do you know who does fuzzy screen? Whitney Cummings, especially when she interviews that oh. weird chick that talks about the gold juice. Taryn Manning. Yeah, yeah. Taryn Manning's got a wrinkly face and she keeps trying to hide it. So what? You're a chinless <laughs> let woman. Who cares? Who needs chins? Guess what? There's tons of micro dicks out there too. Who cares? Stop ducking. I'm get, My face is coming off. I'm bald, you know? We're all aging. My, eye, my eyelids are sagging, I found out the other day. What is that? I don't know. Somebody just brought it up and now I can't stop seeing it. In a comment or what? No, a friend. Uh, oh. She said her mother's getting a surgery that's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's elective. It's not elective because it's a, it's like actually affecting her vision. And she's like, it's like your eyes. And I was like, wait, my eyes look like your mother's saggy eyes. Wow. And she was like, well, not exactly. It's like, I know. Then she was like, I know a lot of fighters have it. And I was like, no, they don't. No, they don't. You're just backpedaling. I'm hideous. God damn it. Are you going to get a lift? No, oh, I kind of, I would if, if I had the money. A lift or a tuck? Is that what what happens? They they tuck in the skin? Uh, to be honest, behind? I didn't go that far. Didn't, wait, didn't Callan do that? Didn't Brian Callan do that? That makes sense. He would do that. I'm pretty sure he did do that. Yeah, he's definitely trying to fight I it. think he got See, his... That just made me want to let it go. Because he's in hell because he's old and he wants to stay attractive for the ladies, even though he's married like five times with a bunch of babies. I... Have one or have a sip. Who cares? I mean, he's married now, right? Or he's got a baby now. You know what? He's great. I'm just saying he's somebody that I can relate to when it comes to caring about what you look like, regardless of being married or whatever, however many babies you have. You you care too much about how you look, sure. and I and I too care too much about how I look. And when I see him 
caring too much when I'm like, you didn't look that bad. I didn't even notice it. Right. Now I'm starting to make myself feel better because I'm like, mm. let it go. Be old. You know, I've been, st- I got a dating app again and, and I've been swiping right on old people just because I was like, you know, we'll both die together or something. I don't know. Especially if I can be totally sexist here for a second. Now, Hell I, yeah. I personally. Women, am I right? I've said this many times as, <laughs> as I get older. Don't get us started yeah. over here. I know. God. Um, a guy, as long as he stays fit and wasn't totally hideous to begin with, like Callan was going to look just fine until he was. He is fit. Seventy. I think he's a good-looking guy. I totally agree. I mean, I think he should get rid of his hair. You take um, you That's... take a bigger risk in having work because of all the ways that it can go wrong. That's how I feel with men and women in general, though. But like, it didn't go start... bad for him. His eyes look better, right? I think his eyes look tighter. I'm only it? worried about when you do, like when you open your eyes and what, whoa, wait, which one's before and after? You can't tell. One's more open than the other. Well, I feel like he's making different expressions. Right. Yeah, he's opening his eyes. Look, I got I got saggy eyes and then look, I now I don't. Like that's, this is, <laughs> that's not how it works. I think that's what it looked like before. Okay, no, he had definitely. Okay, see, if I have that, I probably would get it. Cause that's that's sagging, but it's that it, but it's coming. He's older than me. It's coming. Right, right. it's coming. But for the all difference of us. is, is he's like, oh, shut up, Jason. I was just about to hate on myself again. I'm great. Yeah, you're awesome. I know. I'll be fine. It, I'm gonna be fine. Some super hot chick's gonna be all over me. You, you'll see, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna I, be. I I'm don't gonna d- be rolling in it. I don't doubt that at all. I'm. Oh, don't say anything negative, Jason. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be brutally honest, Jeremiah. I'm doubting it. Really? Uh, Why? I don't know. Just having a bad run, man. What, dude? We all have bad runs, I've man. Been going for a while. Hey, some runs are longer than others. Uh, well, this run sucks. Yeah. Well, well it's it, becoming a bad ultra marathon. Uh, thank you, Michael. You got such good words sometimes. <laughs> Jason, you've is. hooked up with some of the hottest girls I've seen ever this past year. See? Okay. The one that you're probably referring to asked me for two hundred dollars every no, day. No, that is definitely not the one that I'm referring Man. to. Man, you got catfished on that one. The kind of girl who asks you for three hundred dollars every time is probably even hotter. <laughs> you got catfished? <laughs> no, I didn't get catfished. What do you mean catfished? She showed up and I boned her. It was just she didn't look like her photos. She didn't look like her photos. She had done some stuff. Then, like her booty was nowhere near as big in real life, and her face was. Sh- I- I'm gonna be mean. I don't be mean. Okay, but it wasn't good. All right. Is that okay? Is that, <laughs> yeah. is that, is that not the definition? You don't have to censor yourself on my sake. I just don't want to be mean to people. Oh, gotcha. You know? like, I'm just confused as to why she's. You're saying you can't get with hot chicks, and she's saying, "What about that one hot chick?" And yeah, now what, you guys what are hot chick you talking now. About? You guys are competing to describe how trollish she was. No. Yeah. I'm thank not, you, Michael. That, she that wasn't was, at her. That was one of many, but I've seen some of the most beautiful. One of many. That was. I've seen some of you. One of, some of the most beautiful women. Oh yeah. I've okay, met. Okay. One. One beautiful girl I did date, and she dumped me. Because I was too old. That was a good run. That's why she dumped you. She was like, "I'm no. 28. You're 52. Let's be serious." She did not say that. She did. Ooh. Okay. That's a little harsh. And then she asked me for to. I got her a. A gun that doesn't shoot real bullets. It's like a self defense gun because I wanted her to get it because boys were being mean to her on the streets. And I was like, I'll get you this gun. And then after we broke up, she was like being nice to get the gun. And then I got the gun and she never talked to me again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did you give her one of those Alec Baldwin guns? No. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Fake but not? Come on. No, this, <laughs> this was fake from the get go. So, so, did you frame her for murder? <laughs> Uh, she uh, broke up with you. Yeah. Yeah. Turnabout, uh, turnabout is fair play. Man, if yeah. had a real bullet in it, I think she would have shot me. She was not a huge fan. Anyway. Yeah, but that was one. No, there was... Okay. Yeah. I, I can count on one... I can count at least five that were some of the most beautiful women I've seen come through here. And men. Well, yeah, well Dante's hot. But I'm not gay. Yeah, I'm not going to go name them all, but I'm just saying it's not like you haven't had any beautiful they women. Weren't, they weren't... They weren't. They weren't. <laughs> I don't want to do it. All right. They weren't the one. That's all. It's tough. The one? You know, like the one like uh, in, you know, the one that like saves the earth in fifth element. Yeah. Like that. That's what you're looking for? Yeah. Some screwed. Well, 
that's a I should have swiped right, shouldn't I? That's a hard find. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just don't want to. Now that I'm super sober guy, I just have way higher um, expectations. Maybe I guess levels. Like I just like you got to have a bunch of stuff now. Can't did just, did, oh, did yeah. you have a lower target range yeah. when you were really? Yeah, for sure. Oh, do, you, do you feel like because you're more clear now and you just yeah. have more clarity and now you're seeing things that annoy you a little bit more? And things, not so much annoying, off? things that would make uh, me feel negative. Ah, uh, yeah. If you have a negative vibe or a thing that makes me feel negative. Sure. Because I'm just all about trying to be positive because mm -hmm. I've got a lot of negative in me and I'm trying to get rid of it. Sure. And I'm not going to bring somebody along that's going to keep me down. And it's no offense to them. It's just... When I detect it, and I detect it a lot, and I'm like, ah, oh, no, like I, I can't carry anybody anymore. Like you got to help me, you mm -hmm. know. Like we're gonna help each other, or I'm not gonna do it. Right. I'm just not gonna get into it. So that's kind of where it is. Do you think a lot of those people on those apps are, <laughs> are, have a negative affinity? Oh, the, surrounding what them? I've noticed is the ones that want to talk to me aren't hot and are crazy, and the ones that are really hot just like match with me and then never talk to me which is depressing because they're like maybe they looked a little harder and were like yeah i actually no i've heard that um it might even be fake i've heard that some women uh like to get the matches just for boosts of confidence yeah. but they have no intention of even going on the dates yeah that's okay. what i've heard i think you're right and i can see where if you have an unusual vibe if you're that kind of lady you might go, well, I know this kind of dude always swipes at me. This kind of dude. I wonder if this dude swipes on Yeah. Me. I could easily imagine that. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that this guy looks crazy. Does I wonder if you guy would like be me? into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, then that, 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 both those things you both said mm. add up to what Dude, happened. there could be girls rubbing it out just to the idea of you matching with them, and that's all <laughs> they want. That's all they need, dude. Yeah. Ever think good, of that? Good for them. No, it doesn't. That's not helping. <laughs> that's not helping. It's not depressing either but it's not helping. You don't feel kind of cool about that? No. No. <laughs> I'm trying to help no, you. No, I appreciate little. it. Trying to, does I'm it trying seem, to find an angle here. Does it seem, to piggyback on something you were saying, like younger generations are a little bit darker in general? Because I'm kind of inclined to huh. say yes. I feel like I was a teenager in the 90s, and we were kind of the first generation where it was okay to embrace, like, Janine Garofalo is cool. Prozac is sure. new. I don't know. Nothing means anything anymore. But I feel like nowadays the number of young people who self-diagnose anxiety, uh. self-diagnose depression, it's. I feel like it's become so okay to be those things yeah. that some people almost maybe talk themselves into being worse that way than they even are. Yeah. Because humankind hasn't changed that much. I mean, you know, biologically right. we haven't changed I think we much. just used to hide it way better. Right, yeah. yeah you're not yeah, supposed yeah. to say that you're a little bit autistic. I learned that on TikTok. Right, yeah. That's <laughs> insulting to... Did, did, did you say you were a little autistic? I, I had a friend that said that I might be, and I was like, oh, maybe I am, because they are. But I think they might be false. They might be diagnosing themselves with a bit of baloney. Stolen autism valor? Yeah, because yeah, you say of. you're a little bit, or you say you're high. I'm a little on the spectrum. Yeah, but high, high functioning. High functioning. It's an insult to people that are actually on the spectrum. Ah. And I didn't realize that. And I, I and I, I, I'm not. I don't think I am. And and I, and, I, and if I, I definitely wouldn't say if what if I am, I'm not high functioning. Well, you, you would be, because high functioning autistic means like. You tall, can hold a means job. Like, means can, like means uh, like like tall midget. Yeah. Right, that's not insulting at all, Michael. That no, was but a high functioning. One of the worst analogies I've heard in a little while. <laughs> it's exactly right. High functioning being autistic. A high functioning autistic guy is kind of like being a tall midget. It that's means like you're the a, least that thing, but you're still technically like that you're thing. You're a Caucasian end bomb. Like you can't do that. Oh my no, God. that's a different thing. All I right. stand by my analogy. <laughs> Oh, you got it. Hey, everybody. Jason Ellis of The Jason Ellis Show talking about Miracle Made Sheets. Did you know that bedding can hold more germs than a toilet bowl? It's true. Do you want to sleep in a toilet bowl? Look, NASA inspired them. So it's got smart people that invested in these sheets so that you don't sleep in things that are similar to toilets. <laughs> Sorry, you got a dumb person trying to explain smart stuff. Germs, sleeping in germs, bad. Sleeping in high technology sheets that deter germs, 
Good. Temperature regulation so you don't get sweaty or cold. Also good. Discounts. Go to trymiracle.com slash Ellis and try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or a gift for a loved one or for somebody you hate, maybe you're trying to patch things up. You can order them today and save 40%. That's a deal. And if you use the code Ellis at checkout, you get three free towels and save an extra 20% on that. Miracle is so confident that their product is backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. There is no excuse. Support the show and support your sleep. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash Ellis. Use the code Ellis to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash Ellis to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Ellis from The Jason Ellis Show. I've been doing this thing for a real long time. And if you don't believe me, now has never been a better time to sign up to our Patreon because I've got archives, baby. We're talking 20 years of my amazing skills in verbal crap for you exclusively on our Patreon. Right, Michael? If you go to patreon.com slash ellismate, not only can you get access to all the shows we've been doing on Patreon exclusively for the last couple of years, that in and of itself is probably, well, for sure, is hundreds of hours. But wait! But wait! There is more! So much more! It is freaking me out! Everything going back to when you were just a tiny little baby sucking at your mama's teat! I had no wrinkles! And I was only divorced once. I would love to say, it's so far ago you had hair, but let's not get crazy. I know, that was, that's ridiculous. <laughs> All of the archives are available. You can get them individually. You don't even need to sign up. You can uh, pay and get tiny little chunks yep. for tiny little money. Or you can go big. Get real. Sign up for a full access subscription and get, when we say full access, we mean full access to the whole McGillicuddy. You can see all the way up the hole. Patreon.com slash Ellis Mate. Uh, so you got a podcast and already it's doing a hundred, you got a hundred thousand YouTube. You're huge already. It's a success. Well, it's a, it's a combined, back. it's a combined effort. Um, scissor bros take- laid the base yeah. for sure. Very I sad mean, about that. My friend. Hey man. I really I, like that show. I really like you. I, I love Stevie Weeby. I always Me too. forever. Well, he's all forever. My scissor brother. And, uh, you know, of course, it's a, it was a bummer to end the show. Of yep. course, and it was a it was a bummer for our our listeners and viewers too because they were such a strong base of people. Yep. But um, a good amount of them ha- uh, have followed over to the new podcast Trailer Tales with uh, with good. Chelsea Lynn and Libby Higgins, and uh, yeah. Um, so we kept the so scissor- it's all three of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all all three of us every episode. I've never pet a hairless cat before, by the way. It's like balls. It's wild. He's cool, right? Yeah, he's super cool. I never, on screen, I've seen them on screen, and I'm like, I don't think I'd like those cats, and now I'm petting one, I'm like, this is kind of awesome. He's fun. Yeah, if you like grabbing your nuts, you'll probably like hairless cats. <laughs> yeah. He really likes Michael. <laughs> yeah, he loved me till I bled last time. Yeah. Wow. But, but sometimes he fights Michael while Michael's talking to me, and I find that to be very funny. He's defending your honor, man. He just attacks his, like, sweater and stuff, and I'm like, dude, yeah. give him a break. <laughs> I, I am particularly scratchy today, so he he's, he's 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 he, look, he's he met goes. his match. Here he goes. He's gonna stop fighting you. Oh, yeah. there it is. I'm not particularly attached to this jacket. That's all right. Rumble Bean, give him a break. I fed you on purpose so you would go take a nap. I guess that didn't work. So why trailer tales? Are you particularly? Well, am I particularly trashy? trashy? Why trash? Because yeah. I feel like I never really thought about it, but Jeremiah sounds like a name that either really rich people or really poor people give their kids. Kansas City sure. is trash, isn't it? Yeah. I'm allowed to say that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm right. not offended by that at all. Right. I, I, so I have family. Like when they won that game and you posted, you looked trashy as hell. Of course I did. You screamed into your baby's ear. Dude, of course. You lost it. Of course. I went but off. That was a fair. That was a fair. That was very exciting. But we built a good memory together that night. <laughs> <laughs> He was, he had never seen, my son had never seen me that, like, yeah. at that yeah. level. And he was scared. I yeah. And he was scared at first. Yeah, me too. And then he, like, got into it. And then after, he's like, go Chiefs. He got it. He right. got it. He yeah. got it. It was pretty cool to see. That's awesome. Yeah. It was particularly tense, even by Super Bowl standards. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah, I don't know anything about football, and I thought it was an was insane game. game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was an insane game. Oh uh, yeah, but I'm from Kansas. I have family in Iowa, and uh, like I have family who lives in a trailer park in okay. Iowa. Yeah. So like, you know, not all we'll we'll all weave in stories from our past, like little tidbits that are it, but we'll do it in our character voices that we'll pull from stuff that happened. Oh, okay. From childhood and different stuff like that. Yeah. It's like tweaked a little bit. And sometimes, and like my sister noticed one of the ones, she was watching one of the episodes. I can't believe you included that. I'm like, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know what's, what's the character and what's from our lives or anything like that. Um, But yeah, the, but what I was saying about scissor bros is like the first 90,000 subscribers on that page are, are scissor siblings. So some people decided to leave and they unsubscribed, but then, Chelsea and Libby have been helping promote our new podcast, yeah. and we drove new traffic to it. So now it just broke over a hundred thousand. So it's it's cool. It's like so it's bigger than Scissor Brothers. Well, t- I mean, technically at the moment, it's brand new. Anything that's brand new always has heat. Uh, you know what yeah, I mean, yeah, momentum yeah, yeah. and stuff. But I'm yeah, I'm grateful right now that people are, are digging it. Yeah. So yeah, because it's 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 a very very fun show to make yeah. because it's all improv, it's all riffing, and I love doing characters and and I've been looking for a platform to do that for a while like on my show jeremiah wonders i'd have people come on and like you know wear wigs and the different stuff like yeah. that and uh the first few episodes of trailer tales were a jeremiah wonders episode we had chelsea on and it did so well uh, that we then had libby on and then we had uh, uh her husband uh greg on who plays a character daryl and they all is did libby well playing a, playing a character is libby yeah yeah Okay. She's so good at it, though. People yeah. think she's real all the time. Yeah, me too. People stop me and ask me. They're like, "How?" Like, they're like, "I, I know who Chelsea is, but like, who? How is she involved yeah. with the podcast?" I go, "She's playing a character," and people are blown away. They're like, "I am." That's a. So wait, they they, they always ask. They're like, "Is that is Crystal her real name?" Yeah. I'm actually I'm wearing her merch right now. I love I love. Oh wow, Chelsea Lynn and Olivia Higgins. This is this is Crystal. Uh, who Libby Higgins plays on the podcast. And what's her background? Like she's a comedian or what does she, she do? She's a stand up and then she's a, a longtime improviser. And she's right. just been doing character work for years. Oh, and she's okay. like really, really good. Is that a character that she's been working on a long time? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Because it flows. She she's been doing Crystal and then she did this other character that went viral like eight or nine years ago. That was like she was the excuse me the mcrib lady yeah. uh i don't know if you ever saw any of those videos online uh but it's her complaining about the the mcdonald's on darset wouldn't give me a mcrib like oh, like wow. but she's filming it in the parking yeah, lot yeah, and yeah. it looks like a real woman yeah i mean yeah yeah because i believed it yeah and yeah. people think that chelsea's character tammy is real all the time oh all wow the, all the time oh okay even though she's pretty clear about like with her pages and stuff like yeah. hey this is me, Chelsea Lynn, this is the character I do. But yeah. like they still, people all the time think that Tammy's real. Is it a stretch for either one of them? Like when they're being who they really are, is it far off? No, that's what's what's, what's good about the characters. It's 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 a it's a, is, it's it's a variation a or a degree off. Mine's the biggest stretch because I'm like I wasn't raised in the South South. Right. I was raised in the Midwest, but I have family and influences that are very much like that character. Right, okay. Yeah. But mine's the biggest stretch because people know me as a guy who does characters. So obviously mine's going to be a bigger stretch than like if you met me doing that character. Right. You're making me realize that like I don't do, act. I'm not an actor. I've been in some stuff and I'm terrible, but a character that would be based off some people from my childhood would be the easiest one to do. Of course. I can remember what, Yeah. some bogans you, that I, I was just about to say you did you have some bogans that yeah. uh yeah 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 there's some i do a joke about the burnout king and i i over exaggerate how he really talks but it's because a lot of people in australia really did talk like that we uh when we did uh years ago kill tony in australia we did uh this uh we did bogans we played yeah. bogans and yeah yeah and uh dave gunther who is on the podcast he was one of the bogans in australia yeah. for that crowd because my character dave gunther is one of the first original characters i started doing like i've got footage of me on youtube like from 15 years ago playing that character being a bogan 
being a redneck, but like okay. for Australia, we were we were bogans who came over from the states. Were you doing an Australian accent? No, we were just like okay, yeah, yeah. Being, we we're just being rednecks. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like when I do a bogan, rednecks like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. You don't have to be a redneck. universal. Yeah, it is universal. Yeah, yeah. You there's trash in everywhere. You you know, it doesn't matter what country you look. There's there's, there's going to be those kind of people. Yeah, yeah. Ari used to have a great bit about how every country has garbage people. Mm Hmm. Garbage people. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. So I've literally never, to the best of my knowledge, stepped foot in a trailer park. Mm-hmm. Like, what would people like me have wrong about the trailer park experience? Uh, it sounds silly, but some of them are actually nicer than you'd think. I remember uh, Rob from Machine Head saying that, that, like, where he came from, like, everything is relative. You don't know that you're, you're poor. Yeah. Like, I remember when we moved from the bad trailer park to the good trailer park. Well, that's the thing. Like, like the trailer park that my family lived in. Like, I have a, I have a joke about it that I talk about on stage. Of like, I always thought we had a lot of money because we had the double wide trailer instead of the single wide. Like, but oh, okay, yeah. Relatively, you know, it's still. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I've heard that a million times. Literally, what does that mean? So a, it's literally the width oh, of, yeah, right. of well, the trailer. That, okay. so, Makes sense now that you say it. So, uh, the ones that you typically see in movies, those are the single wides. Those are very small. They're very, very narrow. It's but like a, a double bus. wide is literally double the width of that one. Oh, you're styling. Yeah. Right. So, like a house. So, much. so you have a, a full on living room in yeah. a double wide. You have uh-huh. a full on living room. There was two bathrooms in the one that that uh, that my my nan and big pop uh, had that I I grew up going to. So it was like it was like a nice one. I used to go to a trailer park in Australia every year. We go camping in a trailer park in the bush, like near the Murray River, yeah. which is like where all the Aboriginals are and stuff like that. That's where I learned. Like the the closest town was like a pub. Uh, they had like a pub and a a milk bar, which is is what you would do. It's what a Seven Eleven is now. But they call them milk bars in the shade. I wonder if they still have them. But it's, it's you can get milk and candy and bread mm. and stuff. But um, at night, they all the all the stores have metal gates, metal like things that roll up and close all the stores off because uh, Aboriginals would just break the glass and steal stuff. Yeah, because they get the government gives them money in a car and. You mean for like compensation for stealing their land? I think oh, something like yeah. that. Reparations kind of deal. <laughs> they would always the memo on the check just says my bad. Yeah, <laughs> well, it says whoops. <laughs> but they they would always cut the roof off their cars, it and and put as many of them in it. So it'd just be like ten to twelve Aboriginals in a car with no roof on it, and they're all drinking the whole time, and they don't really get DUIs. Like you kind of, they let them go. They kind of let it slide a little bit. They just bit. got beer all the time and they're wasted. And that's like this, that's like a city Aboriginal. You know? How, like, I'm pretty ignorant as far as like the Aboriginals, like, like nowadays, like how populated are they throughout? Well, this was 40 years ago, but yeah, they, when I, when I was a kid, there were still real Aboriginals. And when I say real, I mean, they lived in the bush. Right. Right. And then the city ones would have, you know, like watches and jeans on. And have they given them homes and stuff at this point? I don't but, think so. No, they're still. I don't. I mean, I think they. There's still people who live in the bush like that. They give them money, so you get right. like a, the dole is it's like welfare yeah. in in a, in, a, in Australia. It's called the dole, and they get more than than a normal person for the dole, so that they can have more money to to get to rent a house and if they live out there i don't think that it would be it's kind of like the native americans with like reservations and stuff out here Yeah, but aboriginals but never did a reservation they never no they don't they're not good they were never good with their money like they never had like a, casinos i don't know if it's legal to have a casino in australia maybe things have changed but they never there was never like an aboriginal gated community where you go in and give them all their money it was they would just they go to the pub and then they come out and park their cars with no roofs and get drunk and sprawl out all over the over the lake or whatever. But Native Americans didn't like all form reservations. They got put on reservation. Oh, they were yeah. told this is where you get. They're like, hey, this is your new. The, yeah. the, well, like, like, yeah, the, the good news is yeah, you yeah. can live here. The bad news is you can't not live here. Right, right. And right. then the casinos. I remember when they passed that law, people were like, okay, the Native Americans, whatever we're doing, it's not working. They're still kind of hurting. And they said, well, what about if we may change the law? It's illegal to open a casino outside of Las Vegas 
or uh, Atlantic City, but reservation land is technically considered their nation, not ours. But they so, run it, right? Yeah, but they're like, so who's to say that they can't open a casino on their land? And then all of a sudden, every reservation had a casino, and all of a sudden, there was money pouring into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As far as I know, Aboriginals don't have that. Maybe right. because they didn't give them a casino too, right? like a law that said you guys can have one. That's absolutely right, yeah. But- they don't, they don't, and I'm talking about, I was like 10, 11, 12 kind of thing. But when I was in that, that, uh, that camp there, like uh, there was always like people that lived there all year round. And I would always kind of, I, I, like I hooked up every now and then with some, with some girls. That's hot. Yeah. But the, this one time I was hooked up with a girl and she was older than me and she was a bit slow. Okay. Now would be the time to say that you're high functioning. I <laughs> I already got smacked. I already got smacked down the last time I went there. But yeah. Yeah, I just realized I probably. Well, look, I was. <laughs> I was really young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were but really I young. I didn't know we were playing video games together, and she seemed fine to me. And then we went BMX riding around the park, and then we went for a swim, and she had like a one-piece bikini on a one like a what do you call it a yeah, one-piece one piece bathing, yeah, one suit. Piece bathing yeah. suit and she was hanging off a branch in the and the current is pretty strong in the <laughs> oh, dude, I should... oh no oh you gotta finish this. i know it You've was like too far it was like kind of coming off and i was like hey your your thing is coming off when you say coming off where was it coming off she had some pretty sweet slow boobies <laughs> mm -hmm. slow <Yeah>. boobies <laughs> yeah she was older than me, so it was kind of fair. Like I still say, like if it was, if we had like a math test, mm -hmm. she would have won. Ugh. Yeah, you know. So and she was older, but since she was slow, you guys were the same age. Yeah, but the boobs were perfectly high functioning. They were really high functioning <laughs> at the time. We made out. Okay, that's as far as I, I want to say it went. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh but we were like BMX bandits because that was when BMX bandits was out. You guys ever see BMX bandits? I Nicole did. Kidman was in it. That's right. Oh, it was way before Nicole Kidman was like a famous Hollywood actress. Did you ever see that movie with the magic dirt bike? We should definitely move on. What? <laughs> <laughs> Good segue. Yeah. Magic dirt bike. There was a mad. It was in the eighties. This is a movie about a magic dirt bike. Nah. Oh man. Is it Australian? Mm, I don't think so. In what, okay, good. In what way was yeah. it magic, Jeremiah? <laughs> like it, yeah. It was, dude, in the 80s, they would just make whole plots about like a magic skateboard or a magic. It's true. Like, like I, I don't know how to explain it. It would just be like, I don't know the ways that it was magic. What was it Is called? Is it called the Dirt Bike Kid? Maybe. 1985? Maybe. No. I don't know. No, nah, no way. No, maybe that doesn't seem right. I was at a skateboard TV yeah, show. It is. is it? It is, yeah. It says yes. he used his magic bike to save the local hot dog stand hey that sounds about right Wait, to me the hot dog stand like really neat business. dang do you see him just fly in the air <laughs> yeah oh, oh it is magic yeah. oh, okay now i get it that is a magical jump right there that let's is... go oh no he went over the bars he's all right yeah it's the kid from a christmas story yeah. is it ralphie from a christmas uh, yeah that kid actually turns out was in two movies it's a pretty magic oh, building bike. to building Whoa. way back before any crusty demons of dirt. Looking back, he probably could have shot a little higher than saving a hot dog stand with this. Yeah, sort of yeah, power. with the magic. He <laughs> looked a little small for that bike. Oh, look, it changes. It's a, it is a dirt bike, depending on what country you're in. Dude, yes. Oh, he pulled it into a car. Oh my, man, yes. he, he wrecks the cops oh, over cool. and over again. Now he's using it to kill people. This yeah. is great. It's a twelve-year-old oh, man, a twelve-year-old that wrecks cops. Oh, oh man! I love how when you go back and watch eighty stuff like that, it's clearly a bad guy that just fell on his nuts and hurt himself. How there was no distinction between a guy who was big because he was strong, and a guy who was big just because he was fat. Right. Yeah. It's like anytime somebody actually knocks something over, the guy had turned around. It's like just run that guy. Yeah, can't before catch the UFC, you. fat guys were tough. <laughs> I know. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like, and then they had fat guys in the UFC that got like kicked in the face, and everyone uh -huh. was like, "Wait a minute, yeah, maybe muscles would help." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It turns out that's actually more turns of a disadvantage. Out, yeah, a bit, yeah. It's like mobility get, is kind of important. Yeah, so if you miss, you got to get up quick. Yeah, yeah. Cardio, There's this guy in Australia used to do moto demos, Dale Buggins, and Dale Buggins was like the before Krusty Demons of Dirt. He was mm -hmm. like our evil Knievel. and he used to do de dirt demos where he where he do big jumps and stuff. And Dale Buggins was a legend. My little brother loved him. 
but I think he killed himself. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Should we go back to the Aboriginal chick? <laughs> she I... wasn't Aboriginal. <laughs> Did you get her home in time for Wobner? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's not funny. Wait a little bit, maybe. I found a list of the most expensive trailer parks in America, Tully. If you most expensive? Kind of, There's yeah. one in Culver City. I'm more interested in the in the, the broker's one. one. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you know what wow. I found? It's not exactly the same thing. Oh yeah, Paradise get, Cove. It gets hard, right? That oh makes sense. yeah. Like ten bucks a month kind of thing? No, it would still be I I mean, I'm guessing. Like there'd still be a hundred or two hundred dollar kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm we're talking the cheapest as in, a single, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But but there's as far as like uh the electricity and the water hookups, there's certain trailer parks that like it's it's very cheap because that, yeah. that's why they live in the trailer parks because yeah. the hookups are so cheap. Yeah. I always wanted to move to the one in Malibu. Yeah, that's uh I mean that's I'm sure one of the more expensive ones, yeah. Right. Because I was like, sure, my trailer sucks, but then I go to the beach every day. A lot of those dudes are like surf heads that right. live like they just want to be so close to Makes the water sense. that they're like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I just want to be on water. Makes sense. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for that. If you've ever been down on your luck, like the crappiest room, as long as you're basically safe in there, is like so much better than nothing. Yeah. And when you're young, a crappy room is not crappy. No. Dude. That's the thing is like uh, like a lot of times like uh, when I'd start going out on the road early on in stand up like sometimes I'd be with a headliner that's like this room's awful I'm like this is the nicest room I've ever yeah, seen right. like like I was just like excited to be out on the yeah. road yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think things. I did that with skateboard too. Yeah, like when you're first on the road. You'd be in a van with a bunch of guys, like shoulder to shoulder for you know eight Didn't hours a day, and it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, and then going on a bus. And having your own room, not even sharing a room, and then going back to the van, I was like, "Oh man, I don't know how long I can do this." Uh huh. Uh -huh. You know, like, I'm sore. I need to stretch my legs. It's like that's because you're past it, dude. Mm -hmm. Like you got to be, you got to be from that. Mm -hmm. I remember I had a tour where the people in the back. This is before it got big time. People in the back were the heavy hitters, and they were allowed to smoke weed. And the people like we had team managers it's like a tour manager yeah but the team manager is usually a little more anal than everybody else on the tour because he's in charge and he'll get in trouble if we do things wrong and if we're heavy hitters in the back of the van we supersede the team manager because he's like you guys can't smoke weed in the in the van and i'm like well we're smoking weed in the van and he's like no you can't and i'm like okay sounds good and then we would just smoke weed in the van but one time my friend who was a heavy hitter and I was a heavy hitter, so we were in the back, and he bought a glass bong, and he was pushing it, you know, because we were like, we'd smoke a little joint or take a little the little pipe rip, and like try to blow it out the window, and someone would be like, "You guys smoking way back there?" Be like, "Yeah, but it's out the window. Relax." And then this time, this particular time, my friend took a huge bong rip, and he blew it down the middle of the van, past everyone's heads, and it hit the windshield. It went poof across the, like, the front of the windshield. And he, the tour manager guy pulled over. It was super bad. And we just laughed and laughed and thought it was so funny. Yeah. And now looking back, I'm like, what an asshole. You know, like we were such assholes. But it was like, look, man, when the demo starts, are we shredding? We are, right? So shut up. You know, like we got this under control. But poor team manager guy right you're just you, trying to knock like if we got a dui <clears throat> like everybody in the van could have got a dui i mean, I mean that, sorry the driver could have that was like dennis rodman's mentality with 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 the bulls always he, i heard he, he was he, worse when he went to sacramento like he got traded and went to sacramento the spurs san antonio, san antonio. Yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. And, and wouldn't show up like when they were like okay now we're having the meeting before the game that's when he would take a shower yeah and then he would sh just get out on the court with none of the information that anybody had talked about. And they were like, is he going to keep doing that? And it's like, oh, yeah, he is going to keep doing that. He's going to keep playing his game. And I remember thinking, you paid probably a hefty amount of money to get him because he was you know, on the dream team. And now he's come to you guys. And it's like the ultimate rebounder. You've got him on the team. And he's like, I don't care what happens in this game. Like, right. I'm, I care about the, the party after the game mm -hmm. and, and because it was like celebrity status like when he leave everybody wanted to interview him regardless and because he was such a genius at being a rebounder he was still doing his part 
But when it came to like passing or him being somewhere to help you get the ball there, no, no interest. Yeah, one of my one of my favorite uh, interviews or, or things about him that somebody it's it's in the um, the Last Dance documentary, but it's somebody being interviewed and they said, Dennis, what are you looking up at right now? Like you, you're just oh, yeah. standing watching. No, how many he, times the ball rolls? I know, dude. Right? The rotations on the ball. Yeah. He's like, and I he noticed knew, that like, it goes off this way or he this. He knew way. players' rotations. How many times it rolled when before it yeah. hit? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? That's is, awesome. It's a high functioning rebounder. Yeah, yeah that is really well put. <laughs> like I, I can understand that. In when I started doing the big tours with Tony Hawk, a gigantic skate park tour, and I was already not the best that I used to be, and Tony was. The kind of guy that when he drop in, he would do a it's, McTwist is like one of the more fancy tricks, especially if you don't skate. You it's it's as probably as exciting as it's gonna get in the demo for people yeah. who don't skate. So these are big crowds, and most of the people are not hardcore skateboarders. They're just like Tony Hawk and all his friends are here, and I, he would do one first ride because he was that good. That trick was nothing to him, and that to me, my at the end of the demo, I would do one. When I was really warmed up. Right. And I remember like, I don't know, two or three demos in where I was like, what is like, I'm not even worth being here. Like I, I like, I've got to do something else. Like, and it was a little bit like a, a Rodman kind of a vibe where I was like, to, I've got to invent something else to make me be worthy of being here. Sure, to and make you I, stand out and right. separate yourself from all the other amazing talent that's there. Right, so then I started jumping off things that were near the ramp into the ramp, and if there was a roof and there was any sort of beams or anything, I figured out how to ha ho like fly into the air and hold on to a beam and let go of it and go back in. I called it an ape hanger. Mm -hmm. Somebody else named it, I, but but every demo, when we get there, like I would, when we got to the ramp, I would just be like... Start scouting. Yeah, where yeah. is the thing? Where's the thing where I'm going to, and it, and it was like, uh, did I steal the show? Sometimes a little bit, but did I, did I like Tony did this and Tony did that. Do you see Alice jump up? Like I, I got a little right. thing. You, you got in the same sentence in the same yeah, breath. Yeah. It was, it was worth it. Like, and, and I was definitely like one of the worst guys on the ramp, but, but your I, style though. I held my own. Everyone yeah. was like, yeah, but Alice jumped off the thing. And I was like, that was a, that was one of the smartest things I've ever done in skateboarding. I didn't do very many smart things in skateboarding, but that one in particular, but it did cost me because there was a couple of times there where people started to get wind of it because it was on ESPN. Like there was an actual TV show. There's a few seasons of it. So then when we'd show up, people would tell me, Ellis, you can jump off that thing. And it, and it got to the point where people would be like, hey man, you can jump off that thing. And I'd be like, what the? Yeah, that's way too you, hot. That yeah. thing's ridiculous. And then I learned hard, the hard way I'd go up there to to look at it and when you go up there everyone's like do it do it and you can't go back down the other way yeah you have to jump so there was times there where do some gnarly spills i got destroyed i bet but i was i also remember i always loved the chance to be famous you know it was like this is for all the all the marbles all the glory yeah like i'd be up there and i'd yeah. be like okay you're probably not gonna make it but i'm like if you if you land it and then explode on the flat that's almost as good. Sometimes some people might even think it's as good. Yeah. And I didn't have any like real respect for my body. So it worked out. Yeah. I, I would um, like when we did a lot of those scissor bros challenges, some of those like we took too yeah, far. Yeah. And like it would be if I was ever on like or a part of Jackass, I would probably be a cautionary tale to people because I would yeah. once I'm in like once I'm in. The, the moment and and people are like yeah 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 this will be hilarious i'm like oh okay yeah let's do it it's exactly that you're yeah. committed yeah yeah like it, once you're in it's like if you pull out nobody really understands like well that was because i didn't want to die and it's like well no at the time it looked like you know if you don't do it you're letting everybody down i know and that's not really the case but you and I think the same way. Where yeah. I'm like, if I go back down the other way, everyone's going to go, dude, what are you, crazy? I did one in Australia where I jumped off a wall. And as soon as I got to the wall, I knew that, that my body wouldn't make it. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, it was, and it was in my hometown. And it was thousands of people. Yeah. And I was like, I got to do it. I got knocked out so bad. I, like, I got an ambulance. I, woke, I pissed my pants. I woke up in hospital. 
like destroyed myself. Yeah. But it was, but I remember thinking, if you walk back off the building, like not only will, the, will they, they'll remember you for being the biggest bitch ever. I know. And I don't even think that that would have been the case. I just told That's myself That's a thought inside that. your head for sure though. And, I, and, and then like, and then getting knocked out, like it didn't go viral. Nobody cares. Like nobody was like, yeah, there were a couple of my local friends that were like, dude, you really tried to do that. But everybody else was like, did you see Danny Way? You know, like nobody even knew that I was there. It was like, what did, what? Yeah, what was that even for? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I regret that one. Because <laughs> that one took a piece of me too. Like there was like a, I, my brain didn't work good for like a long time after. You felt slower actually? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and like emotional. Like that was one of the ones where I started to figure out where you hit your head how sad you are for how long afterwards is the is the amount of damage you did to your brain. Like if I cried in the shower for two weeks, it was pretty bad. If I cried in the shower for a month, it was bad. Wow. And that one was, that went on for a while. Yeah. If it rained, I cried. Why? Why do you, why I, do you I, think they were correlated? And I wasn't sad, just crying. Huh. Like I was like, what are you crying about? I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I do know. Yeah, you know, I got brain damage. I'm being dark today. Sorry. <laughs> have you ever gotten a concussion, Jeremiah? I have. Yeah. What were you doing? From doing Scissor Brothers. <laughs> Scissor Brothers. No, I mean, I, I definitely no. But Steve actually one time he he said that I gave him a concussion. I don't think it was an actual concussion. <laughs> <laughs> I can but, see him saying. But that. he, you know, he was like, "You gave me a concussion." I'm like, yeah. it, "It wasn't a concussion, but it was Dude, painful." Somebody licking your butt doesn't give you a concussion. Relax. <laughs> We did this. We did this one punishment on a Papa Shot challenge, where it's a Papa um, Shot. Uh, it's like this. Uh, the it's an arcade game where it's basketballs and you shoot. Yeah, it okay. And, yeah, yeah, you see how many you can make. So I won that one, and the punishment was whoever lost that one had to have a ball spiked off their head into the hoop until it was made. Uh, and I just kept chucking these balls at the top of his head, and yeah. he got a crazy headache from it. And well, dude, yeah. they do say that soccer players. Have yeah, CT if you had it from, wrong from headbutting a soccer ball. Oh, I, I, well, yeah, they typically say like hundreds and thousands of them, right? But yeah, but Stevie Weeby, you know, what I mean, 20 shots is kind of the same. I grew up playing soccer and they were very, very specific on where you need to head the ball if you're going to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah where yeah. do you hit it? It's like right here, it's up here is no good because it's softer, yeah. But yeah. right here, this is like it's the same place you headbutt people. You right. know, it's like like in this like temporal like this yeah. front like kind of area. Yeah. And so they they like they would throw soccer balls at us like over and over, and we would head back and forth. But they're like, don't do it up here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got a concussion uh, once uh, at this. Uh, <laughs> I grew up uh, going to a church camp, and I was doing this uh, this bit where. Uh, <laughs> Man. It was in front of a. It was in front of a live crowd. Yeah, it was that, that fueling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that fueling me, and it was it this thing on. where I was uh, like running from security. Like it was almost like a streaking thing, but without the streaking. Like we were we were charging the mound, kind of a thing. Okay. And we were like during the softball game, and it's it's me. I'm running past these security guards and stuff, and they tackle me, and uh, they're acting like uh, they're hitting me on the ground. Yeah. Now. We didn't rehearse it enough uh, because I told the guy, like, yeah, a couple times, act like you're fake punching me. Okay. He went for a third. I thought the bit was done. I I go like this, oh, no. and he's doing full punches to the ground. Hit, when he hits the ground, his elbow and my nose connect, oh. and I start gushing out blood oh, out of my nose. Sick. And it goes all over my shirt, and it's the only time that I remember getting injured where... I couldn't. I couldn't fight back the tears. I immediately started going. Yeah. <laughs> how like, old were you? Oh, uh, early teens. How, how I was early? like 12, okay. 13. Okay. I literally just started if shooting. You're 15, you're... No, I was shooting okay. out blood, and uh, it <laughs> was all over my it. shirt. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, I, I got all loopy afterwards. Yeah. But I was, and I was so tired. I decided to take a nap, and that's like the worst yeah, thing you can do. To do that. Yeah. 
And uh, one of the counselors, uh, he said he had to give me like a sternum rub to wake me up. Like like he was like grinding his knuckles into... Wait, because you wouldn't wake up? I wouldn't wake up. Oh, dude. So you really were falling into, like, the, into the dark. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. And then they took me to the hospital and yeah. they're like, yep, you definitely have a concussion. They're like, do not fall asleep right now. Like wow. stay up. And I was like, I remember being like in a loopy, slower yeah. state of mind where... They had these anal swabs that were in the, Hell the yeah. hospital where I was like, I was like, swab. can I have an anal swab? I <laughs> yeah. just thought it was so funny. That's and I kept touching people with this anal swab when I went back. Not you anal yourself though, right? No, 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 no. no. Just a clean one. Oh, just that's like, fine. Just like a boop. Yeah. <laughs> I did that to this dude, Ray Khan. I think it's Ray Kwan. He was in Haggard, this movie that Bam Margera made. Yeah, okay. Ray Kwan. Yeah. Ray Kwan? I think so, yeah. But he had braces on at the time. Oh. And I was supposed to do the same thing where I throw him on the ground and I punch him in the face while he's on the ground. And I was like, just keep your head down and I'm going to punch the ground right. next to your head. Exactly. So it'll look, it'll sell. Yeah, it'll it was look from real. behind and exactly. I wanted the shots to look like I was really throwing. But the, I, you know, I was, I was amped. I was in a movie. Bam had picked me to be in a movie. Yeah. I was like, I'm. I don't have any acting. I had a, I was at the, at a nightclub the night before and this other pro skateboarder was married to, uh, who's the famous actress in, in, in Juliet Lewis. Yeah. Juliet Lewis was giving me acting advice, like took me aside and was like, just, you know, you got to believe what you are at the time, just be yourself. And let, and I was like, is this person seriously giving me acting advice? But she really inspired me to, to try the next day. Right. So when I when I started this, I really did just let it all out. I, I was I was supposed to be a crazy guy that was running a record store, and I just believed I was a crazy guy running the record store. And this guy tried to like they were. You know, I didn't like this guy, so I went crazy on him. I'm punching the ground next to his head, and what I don't realize is my elbow yeah. is hitting him in the mouth. Yep, and he's not saying anything because he's <laughs> Bam's buddy, and he's not going to be like cut like Jason's hurting me. But after the scene, his mouth is blood everywhere oh. because my elbow was hitting his yeah, lips and cutting his connecting. mouth on the braces. I felt terrible. But he was, it's like those guys almost liked it. Was that legitimate, like snot boogers hanging off? Yeah. I'm sure, it looked like it. Those, see, that the difference is Bam's friends when you're in a movie where you're being physical. Yeah. If you don't beat that person up because they, they like on their lunch break do that to each other. yeah right 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 right, right. so it's like so they're you know, like yeah what are like, you doing yeah like if, if ellis isn't gonna beat the crap out of raekwon it's like why were you here yeah and, and he was also like man that actually really hurt but he was pumped because they're they're crazy people yeah they're crazy they're all crazy yeah if you if you're in that crew and you haven't <laughs> taken some damage in a little while you're, you're like crew. yeah exactly exactly yeah did you the know? did the shot look good though yeah i i would say this is not a huge brag, but it was it was for sure the greatest acting I've done in movie. Okay, because I was in Paul Blart Mall Cop, and my speaking roles were in the deleted scenes. Nice. Yeah, that's not nice. Now I want to see that. But the best deleted scenes, obviously, Michael. Obviously, <gasps> yeah. Because I've seen Paul Blart Mall Cop. I would have loved some Jason Ellis in there. Yeah, I I, got, I did a good fight scene because I had a fight scene with. Um, with Kevin James? Yeah. Oh, wow. And he was into MMA and he knew my coach. That's how I got the job. Oh, okay. And he was like, can you do this and do that? I was like, yeah, what about if we do this? He's like, that's a good idea. So I was pumped that he was pumped on what I was doing. And I was like, you can hit me. Like, it's okay. Like, I I'm all right. And then uh, he had to smash me in the tanning bed. And they put these rubber hinge things on the tanning bed so that my arm wouldn't get crushed. And the first one knocked the rubber things off and he just started crushing my arm. But I didn't say anything because I was supposed to be knocked out and I was like, I'm playing the role. But that was, that was not only was that super fun, but they paid me a lot of money because I was an actor that did my own stunts. Yeah, so you get like, the double pay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's there awesome. There was a couple of residual checks where I was like, holy no, ah, like, this is mine? what's capable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I knew because Kevin Jay's like, wait till you get the money for that. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you'll see. Like he said that after the fight scene, and I was like, why did he say that? And oh, then, and if you I, can do that, it, there's only a handful of people who do like both of those, like as yeah. professional stuntmen and actors. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that was that was that was one of the most fun because it was a little stressful. I wasn't. I'm like, wait, I'm act, I'm talking. I didn't know I was talking. Mm -hmm. There was like a lot of. 
things that were a surprise to me. And I was like, I don't want to blow it for you guys. Like, I'm not good at this. Like, I don't have a background in it. But then when it came to the fighting scene, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, yeah, don't even what fake I do. punch me, punch me. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm here for that. So that, and, and then he was happy. And that made me happy. And he's like, good job, man. And I was like, I made Kevin James happy. <laughs> That's all yeah, I really cared yeah. about. Yeah, of course. So they didn't, be like, they didn't like the way I skateboarded. <laughs> they were like, I thought you were a pro skateboarder. I'm like, I'm a pro vert, vert. skateboarder. It's and not street. We're, we're in a mall. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's difficult for me to show you my talents in a mall you know right. they were like can't you ride the wall and i was like if you put a big transition in front of it yeah yeah, yeah they're like yeah. well how big and i was like big and they're like well if it's big it doesn't look like it's the mall and i'm like well then it's going to be a little turn on the wall and they, i just remember they were all just like that's they're like oh that's oh. what you're gonna do yeah like they just they thought that i was gonna do a 540 off the side of the mall and i'm like you gotta give me like a big bank for that you know yeah. like a big one <laughs> So big that it'd be like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in a mall ever. But still, it was super fun to... Dude, of course. It's fun to... Anytime you get to be on set, it's... I don't know. It's so fun. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Jeremiah, in honor of your new podcast, I put together a a list of things that I I looked up online that are debatably, possibly trashy things okay and i wanted to just sort of and, okay and, and uh brianna you can you can give your take on it. Right. i want to see in your expert podcasting opinion yeah if these things are trashy okay. or not. american cheese i don't think that's trashy but that might make me trashy singles or a block <laughs> i freaking love american cheese i do too. that's not the question yeah i know it's is it don't look at me like that <laughs> what do you we'll go right now you, you just look at the ground like yeah. that's going on the ground right yeah, now. Take it to the floor. That is a trashy thing to do to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's not only telling you he's he's fight he'll fight you, but where? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. That was what that was. Yeah, you're trashy, and that's why you're defending cheese. Yeah, yeah. because it is trashy. Block of cheese, right? Well, so no. singles to me are the worst because singles are like pretending that American cheese can be fancy, right? You know, and it's not. It's not supposed to be. I was I've born never, and raised on born and raised on American craft singles. See, then I'm trashier than you are because we were not fancy single people. We we never got the block. So I think Jason is the trashiest because I never saw it in block. Thanks, form. Michael. The block I, form. I never saw it in block form. We would go to the shop right, and we'd get a pound of cheese, and they'd slice it for you. Oh, but, wow, that's up. We would we would get not, it in but block not, form. Yeah, but we, they're not individually. But we're a cheese family. We'd get it individual. We'd get blocked, and and we rarely go to the deli and get it sliced like that, though. Is that's the, rare. That's the, rare. But that I, seems like a rich thing. Later on, <laughs> when my dad started to make money, we had craft singles. And uh-huh. That was for rich kids. But at I agree. first, it was a block of cheese, and you would just cut off a block and eat it. Right. Like, it would, you wouldn't even put it in a sandwich. Mm-hmm. You would just, that's a snack, mm-hmm. is a block of cheese. But it wasn't American cheese, right? Because most no. Commonwealth people will tell you that like any cheese, it was cheese in the Commonwealth is better than almost all cheese. Also, cheese. when you were white trash, there was no variety of cheese. There was cheese and then there was no cheese. Mm. I'll say to tasty, go- Tasty, sorry. There was tasty. Mm-hmm. There was cheese and then there was tasty cheese. That's what I remember. Do you like cheese whiz? No. I love it. But when I first came to America, yes, I did. I freaking love yeah. it. No, I used to think it was pretty wild because I didn't know you could oh. do it. Kind of like Tang. When I first came to America and it was Tang, I was like, dude, this is better than orange juice. You put it on a saltine cracker and you fill up all the dots. You, you uh, That is trash. <laughs> that is Triscuits are actually rash. maybe even the superior base. Triscuits is a superior base. They're also more expensive than the saltines. Fair enough. Also, when um, when mac and cheese had a moment, which may or may not be over, when fancy mac and cheese popped off and lobster mac and cheese, I would oh. try to play. Oh, you got to try the mac and cheese here. And I was like, why am I not excited about any of these fancy mac and cheese? <laughs> it took me a while to realize I only like mac and cheese that has Velveeta in it. Oh, I do. Dude, the Velveeta. My mom makes a Velveeta like Rotel cheese dip that's out of this <laughs> world, bro. It's out of this freaking world. Um, some hamburger meat in there. Woo! Is it trashy or not? Enjoying the Grateful Dead. Uh, I guess a little bit, but I think that's more like, uh, honestly, that's more like uh, people who like are stoners or into hallucinogens or that kind of thing. So I don't know. Yeah, they're not know, really trashy. I don't huh? know if they're necessarily trashy though. 
I think that's a different camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this, there might be a trashy subculture there. Oh but. yeah, no, there's a there's groups of trash right. at that concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's more. You're right. It's more alternative. Right. There might even be like they might even enjoy vegan. Like, kind of like is, hippie kind of yeah, vibe. It's not yeah. trashy. I feel like Fish fans are to Grateful Dead fans as Kraft singles are to the Block of Cheese. Nice. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Agreed. Tattoos of pictures of your children. Dude, absolutely. Yeah, it's trashy as hell. All right. Yeah. Dude, especially if it's a dead one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? What do you mean, what? A memorial tat? Wait, of a dead kid? Yeah. Man, that is so brutal. Yeah, but like that every time talk about, I got depressing tattoos because my ex put them on. Like my kid that died, guy got him tattooed. Oh, He's portrait. What, what yeah. You're, what, you're, what, what you're telling me is, if you ever pass someone on the street that has a picture of a child and it says like a beginning date and an end date that already passed, or like R.I.P., you see that most of us think, "Oh my god," and you think, "Trash." Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty harsh. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty harsh. Sorry. Like I got my. I got my dead brother like stuff tattooed on me in respects to him, but not his face. Well, exactly. A date no, or a name or something's sad. fine, but like a portrait? Come on. I think my brother has a portrait of his dad and his brother, and they're both dead. Wow. Mm. He's pretty trashy. He's not, he's weird. It's like, yeah, he is Like trashy. the t shirts, the, like the, the t shirts that are made nah. after somebody dies, those are trashy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. RIP so and so. Yeah. Like it's like got a montage of them. It's yeah. like, what, what are we doing? But at the same time, this makes me feel trashy. I really like those. I think it's a cool t shirt. You also like girls who are a little bit slow, though, too. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm still picturing her hanging, I swear hanging, to God. hanging <laughs> by the branch with a boob out going, hey, I swear to God. Guys. <laughs> Dude, come on. <laughs> the current was pulling her and the branch was almost breaking off. Oh my God. Like it was like, I was worried that she might drown. Yeah. But, and I was also <laughs> like, whoa, whoa, booby. But at the same time, are you going to be okay? Isn't it she so? She can swim like a fish. Oh my God. Isn't it so insane that it is so true? <laughs> it's so just because you wear those doesn't make you not here. They're not <laughs> invisible sunglasses. Yeah, just just my invisibility record. cloak. Anytime like, you're not here. Isn't it crazy though the male psyche that like I I honestly believe if Los Angeles got nuked and we saw the mushroom cloud in the distance and you see it spreading out and you're like, oh, it, we're all dying. It's just a matter of time before it gets here. Mm -hmm. If a chick is facing you and somehow yeah. oh, her shirt yeah. comes off before it gets to you, yeah. you will like classify and rate and enjoy that boob. Yeah. As, like you, I can't not do that. Dude, one time when I was married to like my kid's mother like this is when i was like really trying to be like a grown-up mm -hmm. and we were in the hard rock vegas and it was like that pool that goes around in circles or whatever and a drunk lady was on one of those floaty things and she was like not hot at all and she was drunk she had a drink or whatever and she slipped off the floaty thing and she jumped up and her booby came out and it was a big it was a big saggy booby and my wife at the time looked and i was behind her and we both saw it and my wife turned around to me and was like, ew. And I was like, I know, right? But right before she turned around and looked at me, I was like, hell yeah, booby. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't control it. Yeah. Like it came in, I was like, oh dang. And then my wife turned around and I was like, oh, I know. Like like I tried to I tried to grow up in like three seconds. There was one time where there was this like beautiful European my voice cracked as I said it. I am recalling this memory. <laughs> wow. Beautiful like European woman who yeah. was on the beach that didn't know that it was like topless was not a thing here in the States. Oh, hell yeah. And she was walking around topless. Yeah. And then my wife looked over at me and like and she's like, All right, she's incredibly beautiful. I'm like, You're so cool. Thank you for yeah, right. <laughs> thank you for taking the air yeah, out of the yeah, situation. Let, let I'm just like, she's randomly like and then this old dude, he ruined the moment. He kept walking over, he's like, Hey, oh, so where are you no. visiting and from? And then she covered up. I God yeah. dang it. Yeah. That's why old people got for die. everybody. Yeah. Right? I seriously, old people, stop living. I'm so <laughs> sick of them. Trashy or not, having three or more children whose first names all start with the same letter. Unless you're George Foreman, trashy. Hey, man. Because that's, that's classy. literally my family. <laughs> Wait, really? I'm Jeremiah. Answer the question. I'm Jeremiah. It might be. Uh, 
Uh, I'm Jeremiah. Uh, my older brother's name is Jonathan, and then my younger sister's Janessa. Yeah, but that's not the same name. The same no, name? I'm, no, I'm saying the same letter. Oh, yeah. right? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, the same name. <laughs> the same name. Yeah, that's You better yeah, have, like, several heavyweight yeah. straps yeah. if you're going to try to run the not trashy. You oh, got a girl sure. named Georgia. A girl named Georgia? He had a, like, he got George, 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 and then he, a, he had a girl. Oh, for the Foremans? And yeah. He called yeah. her Georgia. I mean, it's bad when you're, like, that much of a narcissist where you're just trying to keep it that much. I didn't look at it like that. <laughs> oh, Georgina. Uh, sorry, it was Georgina. George Wa. Yeah. George Wa. <laughs> it's not George, it's George Wa. I changed my name to that. George Wa is sick. Uh, Sizzler. Yeah, it's trashy. Sizzler on a first date? Mega trash. What about really? what about if you're 13? Oh, then that's a that's a that's a that's a great evening. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. No, I remember going to Soup Plantation when I first came to America, and I was thinking that this is the greatest uh, food establishment made ever. Yeah. Because you, you may get have been right. So many things, so many different varieties, and you can keep coming back, getting a slice of pizza, mm -hmm. and you can have more pudding if you want to. Hell yeah. I had pudding. I would never have pudding now. Dude, I love pudding. Still. What's wrong with that? <laughs> what do you have pudding? Where do, do you make your own pudding, or do you get pudding those pudding snacks? I mean, I have kids, so you know. S answer the, the snacks. question. So okay, just so you know, for the record, pudding snacks is in the top ten most unhealthy snacks you can get in America. Well, Don't eat pudding. I like and it. And think about your kids. <laughs> I've I like actually it. yeah, but I just down. told you it's very unhealthy. But I like it. What about you can have it, but your kid shouldn't have it. I'll give him a bite and then I'll finish the rest of it. You're lying. You're going to let him have a whole pudding. You can't give a kid one bite of pudding and say, I'm having the rest in front he's of him. He's still young. <laughs> no, the, he's still young enough where it's like one bite for me, one bite for you, where his bites are little. And then I go, oh, you know what I mean? Okay, like I take a huge dollop. He's going to catch on. We'll see about that. I'm just saying, apparently the chocolate one is the worst one. I passed the tradition down to my son proudly. We used to always have on our uh, Thanksgiving table chocolate cream pie. Which Ooh. is a pie crust yeah. with chocolate instant pudding in I, it. I love with it. Whipped cream on top. I love it. So do I. I love it. Done. So do I. Done. I absolutely but, love chocolate cream pies. But like chocolate twice cream per pie. year, we just destroy one of those. Yeah, twice per year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But if you've got chocolate cream pie in the fridge all the time no, and you have it after news. dinner, you're going to die like fast. Brianna, do you ever have, do you have any chocolate cream pie in your fridge right now, Jeremiah? <laughs> no. Then why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. You really like pudding, huh? Let's take it to the floor. Oh my we're, we're going again? <laughs> yeah. wow. Dude, you, Dude, are, you want to fight? You are fucking crazy. Let's go, brother. <laughs> Them's crazy. rolling words. I'm actually starting to get worried. Dude. Like, I'm scared. You <laughs> wanted that quick. Yeah. Yeah. Something about you, I don't know. Yeah. Dude, stop looking at me like that. Any guy who wants to get on the floor that bad, you got to respect. Right? He's capable of anything. Dude, I will choke you. I will. Oh my God. I've got too much to live for to die. I will make you put in your <laughs> pants, son. <laughs> I'm not dying today, brother. I got too much to live for. <laughs> that ain't happening, dude. You, are, you don't come with me, man. We're freaking going, dude. I think dude. he's still hyped on the Chiefs win of the Super Bowl. Like, you got to calm down. You know you didn't catch it, right? Oh, uh, maybe. He acted like he did. You were more happy than the guy that called the ball in the last second of the game. Well, yeah, he because they've been there before. Okay, Touche. Yeah. Oh Brianna, did you ever own or do you currently own any pants that have words on the butt? <laughs> nice, Michael. Oh, she for sure has. Yeah. Nah, she doesn't. You've never owned a juicy pair or anything that was like gone fishing or anything like that? <laughs> gone fishing? No. Wait, who has those? Okay, get on, a, get, on the, okay yeah. get, on, get on the floor. Get on the floor. I'll Beat yourself up, I'll, dickhead. I'll defend what, her honor. What the hell? Gone oh. fishing from ass cheek to ass cheek? That is a new... That You know what? That's a... Yeah. I might bring those out. Maybe. I going got, fishing. I got space. Um, no, never. I've always been like a goth kid, so... Oh, uh, um, okay. So you've never had a hot topic on the back? No, 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 no. I, I don't think they made those, dude. <laughs> they, yeah, they did. They did. No, never. Trashy, okay. for okay. sure. A thousand. Have, have you been on AYG? Have you been on Are You Garbage with Kitty yeah. and Foley? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, love I was, those guys. I was garbage. I bet it was a fine line though because I'm uh, ghetto fabulous, and there was a few things I did where they were like, "Wait oh, a minute, yeah, you yeah, rode yeah. the line a little bit." Yeah, because I, you know, I I had some money for a little bit, so I was like, you know, I don't, I like. Uh, but trashy people always spend their money immediately. Oh, I did that. Yeah, yeah, but I also bought like shiny things. I mean, Will Smith went bankrupt. Like he did. Yeah, when he when he first got all his money, he like went bankrupt, and then like yeah. 
Oh, I kind of like him a little bit now. Yeah. What did they call him? Because he, again? he hooked up all his friends and then he didn't know the, about taxes. Nobody told That's him. That's what about happened that. to me. Yep. Yeah, I lost my house. Yeah, dude. You and Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Peace we're, bo we're, we're both a little gay. Very true. Right? He might be gay than me from yeah. the sounds of things. Yeah. No, well, not bad even. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got with girls that look like guys too. You wouldn't have slapped a dude though. No. No, I would not have slapped Chris Rock. No, never. You know what I would have done? <laughs> yeah. Took him to the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus, dude. I got to go. I, I love you guys. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Before you go, shows, yes. uh, where can people find you, your new podcast? Uh, go watch Trailer Tales, youtube.com, at Trailer Tales Pod. It's every Friday, new episodes um, with the great Chelsea Lynn and Libby Higgins. And um, if you want to see me live, JeremiahWatkins.com. Got a bunch of new tour dates coming up, bringing stand up on the spot back to New Sick York show City yes. in March. Jason's done the show multiple times. If you I want love to it. check out Stand Up on the Spot, that's on YouTube. Type in Stand Up on the Spot. Uh, Jason Ellis and watch a bunch of different episodes. Um, we do that every second Tuesday of the month at the World Famous Comedy Store. It's awesome. And then um, I'm going back to Kansas City, West Bend, Wisconsin, uh, New York, like I said, uh, San Francisco, a bunch of new dates at JeremiahWatkins.com and Jeremiah Stand Up on social media. I Thanks. love y'all. Thank we you for having me again. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. Don't Bye. die.